It's the Constellation Finals as part of our coverage on ACC Network Extra. Leading up to Sean Kenny and Rock Harrison. Tonight on ACC Network for the finals in front of a sold out 3,800 plus largest crowd ever. That's going to be exciting. I can't wait for that. So we move all the way to 141 on our Matt One coverage, where it's McNeil from North Carolina and Crook. Now, it's worth mentioning that these two have already qualified. There's four AQs. Tonight, it'll be the one seed, Matthews, taking on the two seed, Jack from Pitt and NC State, respectively. But now these two are basically wrestling for a higher seed in Tulsa because they've also qualified. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that is. That is fair to say. And that's exactly what's going to happen is the guy who's the winner out of these matches will be the one most likely it's going to be the one with the higher seed because all that goes into account during the seeding process head to heads things like that and placement at your conference tournament and mcneil with the first two points mcneil beat papsy and by a six to three score then lost to jack it was competitive it was four three he dropped down into the consolation bracket took care of Cedeno 5-2 to get to this point. Meanwhile, Crook with that exciting win over Papsy to break the heart of your former teammate, Papsy, who's now with Duke. So Crook with that thrilling win. That got him in. In fact, if I'm Crook, that was so emotional. That was so tight. It was so last second. It's almost hard to get up for this, but we'll see what he can do here. Yeah. And it's not like these guys get a whole... A lot of recovery in between matches. We rolled right into the concert finals. And you got to get up and go again. You got to rehydrate. You got to get some fuel in you as, as much as you can. You don't want to eat too much because you're getting ready to go through a grind of a match, but you want to get enough to where you're ready to rock for the next next match, next round. A warning, stall warning against Crook. All right, second for the tilt. He's going to get that. Maybe a fall here if he can get his shoulder blades to touch. He had the left shoulder blade down. He the right. Great tilt attempt. McNeil the three seed. Quick the four seed. There have been a few upsets today, but for the most part, the seating's been on point. Yep. A lot of good wrestling, though. A lot of great exchanges so far. Good job by McNeil. Racked up a minute and 48 of riding time already so far. Nice ankle pick. Kept the head tight to the knee. Elevated immediately. Followed up, brought him back down to the mat in a very controlled manner. That was a good takedown by McNeil. Start to finish. That was a slick little breakdown there. Across, across the body to the ankle, across the body again to the opposite side, inside the hip. Really slick there by Crook. Crook beat Dylan Sedanu, 4 to 2, then lost to the number one seed Cole Matthews, 6 3. And as we mentioned, had that thriller over Papsy. Doing a good job breaking him down. He only needs 20 more seconds to get rid of the riding time point. Oh, and lets him go. Crook creating some motion. Looking for. Offense, engaging into the hand fight. McNeil goes straight to the collar tie with that left hand. Beating him on the inside. There you go, Crook fighting back inside. Now, one thing fans can think about, too, is controlling the inside of the hand fight is a really, really big deal. So if you notice, McNeil goes straight to the collar tie with his left hand, 
and when you have inside control, you can dictate more of what's happening in the ties. It's harder to do that from the outside. And so you notice guys will fight back inside, and now it's a little battle for control of the inside. And so there is offense that you can create from the outside, like we see from Yarborough, who grabs the elbow on the outside and looks for a duck attempt and things like that. But more often than not, controlling the inside allows you to dictate more of what's going on in the hand fight. So I follow up here on that one. Let's take a look at this takedown, as I want to know more about the hand fight. See the sweep. Good finish there. Way to follow up and cover. With the hands. Yep. At 197, yep. sometimes you'll see some long, lean ones with giant hands. Does yes. giant hands help in wrestling? Uh, I think giant hands helps with wrist control. Okay. But obviously there's technique to get out of wrist control. You know, you rotate your wrist down and you bring your other hand across and you pull, bring it towards your body. You know, and so there's way to clear wrist control. Now, it does make a big difference, though, because sometimes it's hard and someone's looking to clear risk control, and now they're distracted. You can use that to transition to an attempt or a setup, and they're trying hard to fight off, and now they're so worried about this that you're looking for something else. And so that's where the chess match is in terms of being one or two steps ahead. And that's, that's the nuance of wrestling, right? where it looks like not a whole lot's going on, but you're trying to set things up. And when we say set things up, you're trying to almost distract, like, like you ever played dodgeball where you have two balls, you throw one up in the air, so then they get caught at staring the one that's flying in the air, and you hit them with the other one. There you go. It's the same exact thing. We're setting guys up with our ties and with what we're doing with our hands and our motion to get them thinking about one thing, so that way it's easier to get to this. Good stuff from the mock as McNeil leading here at 141. Again, both of these young men will be in Tulsa. They have qualified as part of the four NCAA qualifiers. So here you see Crook getting to the inside tie with his right hand. McNeil's trying to beat him inside with his left. McNeil to the left hand collar tie. Nice shot attempt. And another thing too is when you have inside control of the collar, and someone decides to take a shot while you have inside control, you just have more defense available to you. If I have a collar with my left hand, let's say I'm McNeil in this situation, and I want to take a shot, it'd be hard for me to get through Crook's collar tie because he can keep his elbow down and I shoot straight into his forearm. So this, for example, if he shoots right now, he's going to shoot straight into his forearm. He's going to shoot straight into Crook's forearm. Now, if he clears that tie, gets inside control, he might be able to create more space to create some sort of entry. And so there's just a lot to break down. There's a lot that's there that, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell what's going on, but guys spend a lot of time drilling and doing things very slowly to get the timing down, to get the feel down, to get the technique right, all just to get in on the leg. It is so awesome to be sitting alongside the mock here 